My name is David Wolf. I was born near New York City in America, currently residing in Ontario, Canada. I am a renegade nutritionist. I am a renegade superfoodist and infopreneur, but above all of that, I'm a gastronaut. I explore unique foods that are available to us all over the world. In 2002, I founded, as part of my work, a nonprofit organization, the Fruit Tree Planting Foundation, whose goal is to plant 18 billion fruit trees and nut trees all over the planet. We're at about 200,000 right now. And that same year that we founded this organization, a wonderful organization filled with amazing people, I ran into the most incredible fruit and nut tree in the world. It is the source of the Earth's favorite food. That's right. The population of the world has one favorite food. And of course, it's chocolate. Now, in my exploration of this, I stumbled into it because I was a health food fanatic. I never ate chocolate since I was 15 years old. This was about when I was maybe 32, I stumbled into this form of chocolate here. This is raw chocolate. This is chocolate in its unique original form, a form that is called by the British, it's a slang word, cocoa. But it's really cacao, that's the real word. And it's sometimes called a bean, but it's really a nut. It is the most widely eaten nut in the world that nobody actually eats. I was in Hawaii with some friends. We were peeling them. They started showing up in our smoothies. We'd get these coconuts. We'd break open the coconuts and make these incredible drinks. We call them superfood smoothies. And we started adding them to these smoothies. And I asked my friend one day, I said, what is this? I didn't know what it was. And he said, oh, just peel the next one and eat it. So I, I did eat it. And that's what it looks like on the inside. And at that exact moment that I ate that food, I was touched by the spirit of chocolate. <laughs> A food that's archetypically connected with winning the golden ticket, that's connected with prosperity. I was taken on a rocket ride across the universe in a voyage of discovery that's brought me right to you at this present moment right now. This food is filled with legends and lore, which I summarized along with scientific data and recipe information and all kinds of great stuff in my book, Naked Chocolate, which became the source book or reference book for people who are interested in raw chocolate, because all the chocolate we've ever had has been processed through high heat in machines, and we thought maybe we should just eat it cold processed, is there a difference? And that's what we're going to explore here as we delve into the astonishing truth about the world's greatest food. Chocolate comes from the Mayan lands and ancient Mayan farms. Chocolate is a Mayan word. The word cacao is one of the oldest words in use in the world today. Some people estimate that that word is 15,000 years old, the oldest word in the world. It was brought to the West and brought to Europe by Hernan Cortez, who he was the conqueror of Mexico, and it all happened by an accident because Montezuma, who was the leader of Mexico at that time, was in a state of civil war in Mexico City. And when Cortez showed up there in 1521, there was, they believed that Quetzalcoatl himself had come to the great city. Christopher Columbus, when he first spotted cacao, he thought it was an almond. And this was money for them. This was what their currency was. Today we use coins. Then they used cacao. It was their money. And he saw somebody drop some cacao beans on a little boat. And they all jumped for it. And Columbus wrote that these people are crazy about almonds. Montezuma was known to drink 50 cups of chocolate a day. It was always consumed as a, as a drink, and there you see the cup that Montezuma was known to drink out of, or one that's similar to that. Anyway, how do you turn this bean, this nut, into a drink? Well, you have to break it open, 
and eventually get all of those cacao beans into a, a beverage, which we'll see later. But before we do that, we've got to look at what chocolate comes from. This is the chocolate tree. And yes, money does grow on trees. Still today, the number one cash crop in the world. And it's the best crop for keeping indigenous people in the jungle so that we don't cut down our sacred forests. Every time you choose to buy chocolate, organic chocolate, and or, what I prefer, raw chocolate, you are voting with your money to save the rainforest, and it is a vote that counts. It's the best vote you can have. It grows in a little pod. What an interesting-looking plant. It grows right off the trunk. The fruit does. And inside, there's the flower. This is the glory of chocolate. Look at the different colors there. Inside, we see this. These are the cacao nuts or the beans or the nut that all chocolate is made out of inside. And around each nut is a white pulp. And that pulp was traditionally in Amazonia and Central America where chocolate is from. It was only eaten by women. But men ate the nut on the inside. This is what that pulp looks like. That's what we call the best day ever. When you have that much chocolate, real chocolate, original chocolate, raw chocolate, the fruit, the nut, the pulp, everything. But you've got to watch out because all the creatures in the forest eat it. And in fact... It is known that if you have a forest with 140 species of different birds, that when you put a cacao orchard in and you put it right into the jungle, no trees are taken out, nothing is cut down. You take your little baby cacao plants or chocolate trees, you put them right in the forest, and that will attract at least 40 more species of birds. Birds love to hang out in chocolate trees. It comes back to this, the coin of the realm, the great cacao bean, the secret. Inside, we had an amazing discovery early on in that that cacao bean, the thing that all chocolate is made out of, is the highest antioxidant food in the world. This was a discovery. This was not known 10 years ago. It is known now. Chocolate contains 15 times the amount of antioxidants as wild blueberries. 20 times the antioxidants is what's in green tea. 30 times the antioxidants as red wine. All of those pigments of color that are captured in that beautiful purple color, that's the antioxidant. It's actually the color. And the brown of chocolate is the polyphenols that protect your cells and actually protect you from aging. Listen to this. It is known now that chocolate is the number one longevity food in the world. That is known. It is the number one food for your heart, according to the research, for your heart. It's also a great way to party and have a good time without a hangover. <laughs> chocolate grows across the temperate climate, the, the, what we call the tropical belt of the world, from about 20 degrees north latitude to 20 degrees south latitude in that belt. And it's originally from the Americas, Central America and Venezuela, Ecuador. Most people now believe that chocolate's originally from the Orinoco River Basin of Venezuela. That's where the Spanish first rolled into and saw tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands of wild cacao trees, but no people 500 years ago. I searched all over the planet. I visited shamans, asking them what they thought about chocolate. This shaman in the Amazon told me that you can take the cacao tree bark, peel it off, soak it in ice cold water. It releases a gel in 24 hours, and when you rub that into your scalp, it cures male pattern baldness. <laughs> I'm an infopreneur. My eyes went into dollar signs when I heard that. You mean there's a product that would sell more than chocolate itself that comes from the chocolate tree? And we're researching this right now. First and foremost, I'm a researcher. That's what I love to do. I love to study, research, and look into the data. Chocolate is the number one food 
in magnesium of any food in the world. That is the number one mineral deficiency in the Western world. Also, chocolate is the highest natural source of iron, the highest natural source of manganese, and the highest natural source of chromium of any major food in the world. These are very important minerals for blood building. They're very important for stable blood sugar. And of course, magnesium de-stresses us. Could we use that? I think so. Chocolate is also extraordinarily rich in phosphorus, zinc, and copper. Zinc and copper are for healthy nervous system and phosphorus for bone. We always hear about calcium, calcium, calcium. Phosphorus. We need that for healthy bones. And this is why chocolate is associated with longevity. If you recall, there was a great book written years ago, which we're going to look at, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And the Oompa Loompas had brilliant, pearly white, strong teeth because chocolate is great for your teeth. Chocolate toothpaste is coming. <laughs> this is what the cacao bean looks like when you break it open, when you break it into the different pieces. And those are called nibs. And these products are available here in Finland now and all over the world, raw chocolate products. In fact, this industry is now over a hundred million dollar industry. And it all came from one moment when I bit into a raw cacao bean, and for the last eight and a half years, I've been proselytizing about the power of chocolate all over the place. In fact, it never stops. Some people complain about that. Anyway, iconically, chocolate is associated with, a, with wonder and magic. And if you see that giant head back there, that's an Olmec head, they are the ones who originated the word cacao. And you can see the bird in this image as well, indicating that connection between birds and, and that realm and chocolate. Chocolate, as I discovered when I was studying in Oaxaca, Mexico, is added to guacamole, but not processed chocolate, raw chocolate. They take the crushed up nibs and they put it in their guacamole, try it at home. I was fortunate, I grew up in California with Mexican people and I was in love with guacamole from an early time. What an amazing thing to have your cuisine expanded and that's what we're doing with chocolate. I got so into chocolate, I started growing chocolate. This is my chocolate nursery in Hawaii. I have a farm in Canada, I have a farm in Hawaii, and the purpose of that farm in Hawaii is to grow chocolate and to explore the mystery and magic of this great plant. I grew that chocolate tree from seed. Such an amazing amount of learning can come from growing plants. You can learn more from a garden many times than you can from a book. I was very, very excited to explore. Maybe there's even more magic here than we know about. And I have continued to discover that there's little things. Anandamide, for example. The bliss chemical is present in chocolate. The love chemicals, phenethylamines, that are damaged by heat, but entirely present in raw chocolate. There's at least seven of them in raw chocolate. And those are the feelings of love, happiness, and fulfillment that chocolate gives us. It's from a chemistry that's in the plant. This is the book. And if you recall the book, I do want to mention that when I got to chapter 16, there was a most amazing sighting that occurred for me when I was in Amsterdam many years ago. <laughs> you can guess what happens there. <laughs> Oompa Loompas, everyone said at once. Oompa Loompas, imported direct from Loompa land, said Mr. Wonka proudly. There's no such place, said Mrs. Salt. Excuse me, dear lady, but Mr. Wonka, cried Mrs. Salt. I am a teacher of geography. Then you'll know all about it, said Mr. Wonka. And oh, what a terrible country it is. Nothing but thick jungles infested by the most dangerous beasts in the entire world. Horn swagglers and snoz wangers and those terrible wicked wang doodles. A wang doodle would eat ten Oompa Loompas for breakfast and come galloping back for a second helping. When I went out there, I found the little Oompa Loompas living in tree houses. They had to live in tree houses to escape from the wang doodles and the horn swagglers and the snoz wangers. They were practically starving to death. They were living on green caterpillars, and the caterpillars tasted revolting. And the Oompa Loompas spent every moment of their days climbing through the treetops, looking for anything to mix with the caterpillars to make them taste better. The one food that they longed for more than any other was the cacao bean but they couldn't get it. 
And Oompa Loompa was lucky if he found three or four cacao beans a year. But oh, how they craved them. Listen to this. They used to dream about cacao beans all night and talk about them all day. You had only to mention the word cacao to an Oompa Loompa, and he would start dribbling at the mouth. Listen closely. The cacao bean, Mr. Wonka continued, which grows on the cacao tree, is the thing that all chocolate is made from. Roald Dahl knew, and it was in the book, the great book, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Remember the Oompa Loompas? This is an elf with a cacao pod, but the sculpture is 3,000 years old. It's intrinsic to the magic of chocolate. In Mexico, this is where the great cuisine was innovated, and it was always served as a drink, but today we have blenders, and it makes it so much easier. You can upgrade your smoothie, your protein shake, by adding a dash of raw cacao and bringing forth the magic and wonder, just as they did in ancient Mexico. On the Mexican 100 peso note, if you look closely, right there next to Shoshi Pili are actual cacao recipes iconically represented. We have innovated and brought forth now an entirely new cuisine, brought to the greatest chefs in the world, revived some of the great additives of chocolate, creating these wonderful and delightful recipes. The one question that I get more than any other after all of this is, is it possible to OD on chocolate? And the answer is, yes. Thank you so much. I'm David Wolf. Have the best day ever.